The other thing that's going on that's extraordinary, again, is this democratization of the ability to change the world. You know, a thousand years ago, the only people who could really take on national, regional, or global issues at best were the kings and the queens. And even the best that they could do was change you know, the monetary policy or deploy their troops. A hundred years ago, it was the robber barons, the industrialists, who could make a difference in the world. And today, it's all of us. Anyone who truly wants to has access to this year $15 billion in crowd financing, has access to extraordinary technologies. And it's really the number of experiments, the number of shots on goal that are giving these, us these extraordinary unicorns, as they're, as they're called. So I think about this, and I think about the fact that it's got to change the way we do business. Because these entrepreneurs aren't smarter they're just trying more and more experiments. And they're taking more and more risk. And you've heard the stats. I know they've been said a number of times. In the next decade, we're going to lose 40% of today's Fortune 500 companies. The lifespan of a company has gone from 75 years in the S&P 500 from you know, back in 1920 to 17, 18 years now. And part of the difficulty is that a lot of uh, of CEOs running companies forget what business they're truly in. I opened my last book, Bold, with the story of Kodak, which I hope you know, it's a time telling, you know, Stephen Sasson invents the digital camera in 1976, and he walks it into the boardroom of Kodak and says, here it is, this future of Kodak, it takes 0 .01 megapixel images in black and white on a tape drive. And of course, the board goes, what are you kidding me? That's a joke for kids. You know, we're Kodak. We make beautiful, high-resolution images. Besides, we're in the paper and chemicals business. And of course, you know, in 2012, Kodak goes bankrupt, put out of business by the very technology they had invented. They had the first mover advantage. They had intellectual property on. But they forgot what business they were truly in. And in the same year that Kodak goes from, you know, at its peak, uh, you know, a $28 billion market cap, to declaring bankruptcy, another company also in the digital imagery business called Instagram gets acquired for a billion dollars by Facebook, but they've got 13 employees at the time. So we're going to see this dance between linear thinking companies and exponential startups more and more.